Hey guys, it's TT. Welcome back to the channel. It is time to continue my collection tour. And today, as you can see, we are back in the comic book room. It's looking slightly different than the last time you saw it. I've added some different statues, done some rearranging here of the slab wall, but I thought I'd show you guys around a little bit. So if you missed my first comic book room tour, this used to be my wine cellar. Now, I don't drink wine, I don't collect wine, so it was kind of a space that was going to waste. I was just kind of using this room to store all my comics and supplies. I decided to kind of fix this place up a little bit. Uh, I needed some more room to put some statues. I wanted to tidy up the raw comic book boxes that were just kind of stacked up on shelves. Yeah, just kind of get things a little bit more organized so I could show this stuff off when people come over. I've got some of these big keys up on the wall. Uh, as I mentioned in that first video, these don't usually live here on the wall. I actually have a walk-in vault at another building that I own, but occasionally I will bring them back over here and display them when I have guests that want to see them. So let me kind of show you what's on the wall right now. So up on top, we have some of the more modern books that I thought were worthy of display. We've got a first appearance of Cable up there, some cool negative space variants, some random books as well. And we have like a David Finch Deadpool, Frank Miller Wolverine, another Finch Wolverine, Thundercats by uh, Arthur Adams, Hulk 340 by Todd McFarlane, Longshot number one, Infinity Gauntlet, up there, we got the Spider-Man number one that I have 200 copies of. <laughs> Coming down here, we got uh, the first appearance of Rogue. I think I have uh, 20 copies of that too that I picked up back in the day. Uh, one of my favorite Mike Zek covers right here, Wolverine facing off against Captain America. This one is signed by Mike Zek and John Beatty. This is the Tick Special Edition that I picked up from New England Comics back in the day. Spawn number one, the old Macross, Predator number one. We got a Thundercats number one, Masters of the Universe, uh, the Punisher limited series number one. Uh, my other favorite Mike Zek cover, definitely my favorite Punisher cover ever. Submariner number one, uh, first appearance of Vision. Here we have one of the few DC comics that I have up here. This is the first appearance of Peter Pan, I mean Poison Ivy. And then we've got another big Marvel key, Journey into Mystery number 83. First appearance of that guy right there, Thor. We've got a first appearance of Doctor Strange. First Silver Age Cap, Avengers number four. And we've got a Daredevil number one. And then we come to the big row right here. When people come over, I put these right here so they can see them without having to bend down or uh, straining their necks. So here we have uh, one of the two copies of X-Men number one that I have. This is actually the lower graded one if you saw my video on that. Uh, but it just presents better. It's, uh, it's not as faded, the colors are more vibrant. This is a 4.0, the other one's a six, but uh, I like this one a little bit better. Might wind up selling that other one. I don't know, or maybe getting a third one. We'll see, we'll see. Then we have uh, the Fantastic Four number one, the Hulk number one. Here's my Amazing Fantasy number 15, signed by Stan Lee. Then the Amazing Spider-Man number one, signed by Stan Lee. Uh, here's the uh, first appearance of the Punisher. First appearance of Iron Man. First appearance, oh, first full appearance of Wolverine. Then we've got Avengers number one, first appearance of Ghost Rider right here. Here's the third appearance of Wolverine, or a cameo appearance. You wouldn't know it by looking at the cover of this, but this is actually the first appearance of Thanos. Uh, it's also the first appearance of Drax, the Destroyer. Here we have uh, the first appearance of Doctor Doom, Fantastic Four number five. Here is a comic near and dear to my heart. This is Transformers the Movie number one. And this features a lot of first appearances as well. We got Rodimus, RC, Ultra Magnus, Galvatron back there. Very cool book. Then we got the first appearance of the Dinobots, Transformers number eight. 
First appearance of Red Hulk. We got a Venom number three over there. Uh, first appearance of Null, I believe. Here we have a Ms. Marvel number one. Here we have the first appearance of Wolverine in cameo on the last page, last panel. This is Hulk 180. This one is signed by Herb Trimpey, who did the art. First full appearance of Gambit. Uh, iconic Andy Kubert cover. Here we have an X-Men 101. First appearance of Phoenix. Fantastic 467, first appearance of him, who becomes Warlock. Here we have in Eternals number one. As you guys know, that movie was very well received. People love that movie, not so much. Thor 337, first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. Here we have a 4.0 Fantastic 452, first appearance of this guy, Black Panther. The She-Hulk number one. Iron Man and Submariner number one. Oh, we got another Ms. Marvel in here? I didn't even know I displayed two of these. Yeah, I might have to swap that out. And then we got uh, Master of Kung Fu. First appearance of Shang-Chi. Ghost Rider number one. Iron Man number one. And a Cap 100 over there. And then down here at the bottom, it's kind of some random stuff here. We got uh, The Death of Wolverine. This was a four issue series. The covers here are uh, from J. Scott Campbell and uh, I own the original artwork for all four covers. So I thought it'd be cool to actually have graded books as well. And then we got a Conan number one, first appearance of Spider-Gwen, then the House of Secrets, number 92, first appearance of the Swamp Thing. What is this one? I didn't even know what this was. So this is Year of the Villain, Hell Arisen number three. This is the first full appearance of Punchline. I kind of forgot about Punchline. Couple DC books right here. One of the early appearances of Rocket Raccoon. Another one from my childhood, Transformers number one, Bill Sienkiewicz, Painting of Optimus Prime. Man, I love that art there. Lots of first appearances in that book. Then we got a Spider-Woman number one. It's Marvel Spotlight number 28. First solo, Moon Knight. Then we've got my other Iron Man number one. This one is the dreaded purple label. One of the very first books I ever got graded. And it kind of turned me off to grading after I got that purple label. Yep. Then uh, Ghost Rider number one. I think I have about 30 copies of that comic book right there. Then we have this cool Clayton Crane Transformers cover uh, with a Devastator on there, which you guys know I have a giant statue of. So that one's signed by Clayton Crane. That's everything up here on the Wall of Fame at the moment. Uh, right here is where I keep some of my uh, lower value slabs. Uh, I got some out here that right now I'm looking for a place to put them. Like this one, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number one. Some of the magazine stuff. So I got this other one, Last Ronin, with a little remark by Kevin Eastman on there. I'm looking for a box that's big enough to hold these magazine slabs. All right, over here are some slabs I took out. Now, there's been a request to do a Rhino comic video. <laughs> However, after I filmed it, uh, I don't know what happened to the footage. Uh, I'm gonna try and show off those comics in a different way rather than going through and trying to pick every single Rhino cover out. So I still have these out from that video. So Jordy, this one's for you. Here it is. Amazing Spider-Man number 41. First appearance of Rhino. Uh, here is the second appearance right here. Uh, this one we get the origin of the Rhino. Also the first full appearance of Mary Jane Watson. Hopefully, Jordy, that holds you over for now until I can put that other video together. So if you guys missed the first video, uh, these are BCW uh, plastic graded comic book boxes. Uh, I really like these boxes, both for graded and raw books. Uh, they're just very sturdy. You can put in these dividers so your books aren't flopping around and it's got a nice little cover and you can stack them if you don't have shelves like this but uh there you go that's where i put some of my graded books 
And then over here is where I keep all my raw books. I got uh, 15 boxes here, 15 over there. I measured them all and then I built this case to fit uh, five boxes across and three high. And it also gave me some pretty good depth uh, for some of these statues as well that are pretty big. So uh, we'll get into those a little bit later. Yeah, I'm still going through this whole thing, trying to alphabetize everything. Oh, look, there's another rhino. See, Jordy, I, I was working. I was trying to get that video together. <laughs> Even the Amazing Spider-Man number 100 that has rhino in the background. Right there, see, he's right there. I pulled out every Rhino cover. Yeah, there's a lot of books in there. A lot of books. Have I read all of these? Uh, no, I haven't. So these are drawer boxes. Just like the title says, they're uh, boxes that don't have a top. They have an outer shell, which acts as a lid. And you pretty much just pull them in and out like drawers. There's enough room here where you can put labels and dividers can also put these dividers to section things off. Works a lot better than uh, just stacking short or long boxes on top of each other because when you do that, you can't really get to the bottom ones. They can all link together so they're not sliding in and out, but as you can see, each row is connected, but the top row is not connected to the second row. So if you push too hard, it kind of goes back and then you need to kind of like wiggle the whole thing forward. And once you get these boxes full, uh, they're pretty heavy. So that's uh, the comic books. Let's get into some of the statue stuff. So uh, this is my little cosmic display right here. All my space characters, including this little guy right here. This is, of course, Grogu from Endgame. Not quite. Uh, so this was a little optional piece to my Mandalorian statue. And since uh, on the statue, I have him holding Grogu in his hands. I just stuck him there for some reason. And now he's hanging out with Thanos. So we've got the XM Studios Thanos and Death. Very cool piece. You're gonna see a lot of XM Studios pieces in here. Uh, some of my favorites. We got Star-Lord comic book version. We got the XM Studios Groot and Rocket. I love Rocket's got that matching uniforms. Here we got some sideshow pieces, starting off with Nova here, which is the proximity piece to the Silver Surfer, which I have in another room. Uh, but I've got displayed right here, a custom Silver Surfer. That's kind of uh, flying, holding his surfboard. And then behind him, we've got Galactus this is the old Sideshow Galactus. Still the best one in my opinion. That one is a really tall statue, which is why I made these shelves uh, tall enough to accommodate, I don't know, 30 something inches. Then here we have the custom thing. This one, he's got his red shorts on instead of the blue. This was a variant uh, made by the commissioner. I think it looks pretty cool, but uh, if I get any of the other Fantastic Four, they're probably gonna have their blue uniforms on. So I might either have to repaint this one or sell it and get me a blue thing. This one's crazy, comes on this giant base. Uh, probably a little bit bigger than it needed to be, but uh, we got uh, basically a crushed Doctor Doom throne here. So awesome base, just a little bit big for a quarter scale character. All right, then we've got uh, some big hulks in here. This one is Planet Hulk with his gladiator outfit. Got a big sword, gladiator portrait on him. Some nice armor, big axe. This one is uh, XM Studios as well, sculpted by Aaron Ray Perez, uh, who also did this Red Hulk right here. He is just so massive. There's some uh, crazy muscularity on this guy. All right, then moving over here, we have the XM Modern Thor. This is the one where he is gonna be smashing Mjolnir into the face of the Destroyer. He's down there on the bottom. Look at the armor on this guy. So this is my third Thor statue. 
in my collection. I've got the Sideshow Daniel Bell uh, Breaker Brimstone, as well as the Legendary Beast Thor. That one's one third scale. Then we have a couple of extra portraits here. This one is for Carnage, and they go up to that statue up there that I'll show you in a bit. But uh, I like that transformation portrait the best. And speaking of transformation, here we have XM Studios Hulk transformation. Uh, this is one of my first XM Studios pre-orders. Uh, after I saw it, I had to get it, being a big Hulk fan. I think this is still one of the best uh, Hulk statues. We've got Banner up in front going crazy, losing his mind. Then we've got the Incredible Hulk kind of breaking loose. That was uh, the bottom row as it stands at this moment. And then down here at the end, uh, we've got another DC piece. This is the Joker from Prime One Studios uh, based on the artwork of Lee Bermejo. I had the uh, Legendary Beast Captain America down here, but uh, he got promoted up to my hallway upstairs. In this box right here, I've got a special box of comic books. And these are all comic books that I own original art for. They're not the most valuable books, but uh, since I own the artwork that's uh, contained in them, like this cover right here, this is a cover by J. Scott Campbell. Here we have uh, the Alpha Flight cover that I own from Jim Lee. And that's pretty much the, uh, the comics I've been collecting lately. Has just been comics that I've been able to secure original art from. Let's move on to the top row here. My arm is gonna get tired holding the camera up there, but let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, a lot of this stuff was here last time. This is my Amazing Spider-Man statue collection. Uh, I am expecting a few more pieces that I'm not sure are going to fit here, so I might need to do some rethinking, but uh, right now we've got the Sideshow Spider-Man Comiquette. Uh, I love this piece. Now, some may say his head might be a little bit big or something. I don't know. That's still an awesome Spider-Man piece. Then we have the XM Studios Dr. Octopus. We have uh, the Sideshow Rhino. Love that piece. Super light piece. Uh, but you couldn't tell by looking at it. Then we have the XM Studios Sandman. We have a custom Green Goblin. I have videos on most of these if you want to check them out. I think yeah, some of them are on our other channel, EvanTube HD. Uh, then we have a custom Venomize Mary Jane. That's kind of this metallic purple. Very cool. Then we have the XM Studios Mysterio. The XM Studios Lizard. Uh, we got this custom Franco Carlissimo Venom uh, jumping over a bell. We got a plastic Spider-Man right there. Didn't really care too much about this one because it is more like a toy. Looks kind of cool up there. My arms are getting tired. All right, and then we have this uh, custom Carnage holding Mary Jane. This is an awesome statue. It's a little big and crazy. If you missed that video, check it out. It's really a cool piece. We got that one right next to Venom. I think they make a pretty cool pairing. And then we have another symbiote Spider-Man. This is a, another custom where he's on top of this statue and all the symbiote is coming out. And then over here, a non-Spider-Man statue. This is uh, the Curse of the Spawn. Uh, this is a really cool statue as well. Doesn't really go with all the Marvel stuff in my collection. Neither does this Joker, but uh, eventually I might need this space. Uh, I've got a Kraven coming in, and I've also got a giant Spider-Man Sinister Six diorama, which is not going to fit in this room at all. Uh, it may not fit anywhere in my house. It's coming in five boxes I've been told. I don't have room uh, for those boxes. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I might have to buy another house to put those boxes in or maybe just get rid of them and just never get rid of that statue. I don't know. It's going to be one of the craziest statues uh, that anyone has ever seen just because it's a quarter scale with seven different characters all on one statue. There's been a bunch of 1-6 scale dioramas with multiple characters 
but uh, I haven't seen a quarter scale diorama of that magnitude before. So it's gonna be interesting. Uh, we're gonna unbox it on the channel. It's gonna be fun trying to find a place to put it. All right, guys, so that was today's video. Stay tuned, I've got a lot more stuff to show you. Until then, bye-bye.